Um, hi, everybody. I'm Colleen McKenzie. Uh, I run the AI Objectives Institute, uh, where we work on aligning human systems in service of eventually aligning technology as well. And uh, today, I'm going to give a little bit of background on a tool that we're then going to use in a workshop talking about ways we think AI could be awesome in the next decade. Um, I'm going to be talking about a tool called Talk to the City and why scaling deliberation is important for alignment problems. Um, so you might ask, what does deliberation have to do with AI? Yosha actually answered some of this for us in, a, in the last talk, which is that um, getting groups of people to coordinate around what they want is not exactly a solved problem. And figuring out what we're aligning technology to is the first step in actually being able to align it. Um, there are some problems, obvious to some of you, uh, with how we agree on things in groups. Uh, one problem is. Preferences can change over time. If you take one poll at one point in time, you get the opinions of people at that point in time. They may or may not be informed opinions. They may or may not be lasting opinions once those people are more informed. Um, and you, I asked myself, what would happen if people had had direct conversations with people from the other side of the political spectrum about Brexit before they had the vote? Might have had a different outcome. Um, I'm going to speed through some social theoretical background here so we have more time to talk amongst ourselves. Uh, but basically, there are a number of problems well studied in social theory about why uh, getting the clear preferences of a group of people is difficult, not just because people can disagree, but because the way that you ask questions and the way that you frame situations can change the outcome. So for example, this is a somewhat reductive view of the judicial system. If you ask three judges, whether somebody is guilty, they're going to be asking themselves about the criteria for that person being guilty. Did the person take a specific action that was criminal or illegal? And was the person obligated not to take that action? And if you ask each of those questions, you can see you sometimes get a different outcome if you aggregate the results for specific questions than if you aggregate the overall decision that people come to. Um, so in the legal system, we have ways to deal with this. But uh, in terms of figuring out preferences of different groups, this can result in very different outcomes that are unexpected uh, by the groups that feel that they know what they want. Uh, separately, ranked choice voting is one of a number of different voting systems that are purported to solve at least some of the problems we have in voting now. But it brings up additional problems, including things like cyclical preferences, where you can get group, you can get cycles of preferences where a majority prefers one outcome to another, and a majority prefers that outcome to a third, and a majority prefers the third to the first one. And so figuring out what the clear majority is in these cases is very difficult. So this is a really hard problem. We have some ways that we know how to solve it, or at least mitigate some of the downsides. And one of these is deliberation. So what is deliberation? Deliberation is citizens addressing public problems by reasoning together about how best to solve them. And what that means is people are actually interacting with different perspectives, very different preference sets, people with different information that they're using to come to those preferences, and understanding the landscape of the world that they all live in, and also the landscape of how other people experience that world, which in a group of people of good faith who are looking for pro-social outcomes can help people change the opinions they would have had in response to new information. Um, so this is a pretty tried and tested process. I think this quote is from a book from the 80s. Um, Stanford's Deliberative Democracy Lab is doing really amazing work on this. I feel like we don't hear about it as often as we hear about how America is like terminally polarized or whatever. Um, but there are a lot of groups that are using deliberative processes, many different types, um, to help people move towards more agreement than they had previously. Um, a little bit of a recap. More things about deliberation. I'm going to speed through this. Um, the downside is that groups of people talking to each other ends up in a combinatoric explosion of interaction of perspectives, which means it's fantastic for small groups. A lot of um, the work that groups like Stanford are doing is with 12 to 20 people all talking to each other. That's doable. But once you try to scale deliberation to larger groups, all trying to interpret each other's preferences, it gets really unwieldy, which is why you have, you know, groups that, uh, <laughs> um, which is why you have groups very well coordinated at the sort of, you know, 20 or lower scale. You can coordinate larger groups up to 
Dunbar's number um, without like significant technology and without using uh, without losing um, a lot of the nuance of those perspectives. But once you get to nation state levels, you know you have no way of knowing what the other people who are voting for a particular person in power are actually thinking about that unless their voices are singled out. Okay, so what do we do? The way that I frame this problem is that deliberation involves these four steps. One, you figure out what people want. Two, you organize people into groups. Three, you do the discourse. People reflect on other people's opinions. They reflect on the new information they have. And then four, you do a preference aggregation or some sort of voting. Um, the first and the last part of this process, we kind of know how to do it pretty straightforwardly. We have polling systems. We do have voting systems. Um, but the two middle parts of this are not solved at scale. So what if we tried to represent reasoning about preferences instead of just people's preferences themselves? Um, and this is what my team is trying to do. Uh, Talk to the City is a project that uses LLMs to do a large scale analysis of very large corpora of unstructured text, of videos, of audio transcripts. Um, we've also used Polis data. Polis is a crowdsourced survey platform some of you may have heard of. Um, we've done it with uh, large groups of tweets about certain topics. Um, and it visualizes the overarching opinion themes uh, that are discussed among these populations, categorizes uh, specific claims that people make in a list of those claims, and then pulls out quotes from specific individuals. Um, and this allows you to drill down from broad strokes, what are people talking about in the first place, all the way down to specific things that specific people have said, or in the context of video or audio interviews, you can actually hear or see and hear somebody expressing their own perspective, which we found is way more impactful than just seeing somebody else's version of it written down. Um, I'm going to skip the demo here, because we're going to demo at the end. Um, Quick uh, next steps, this is what we're working on right now, we're working on identifying cruxes or particular reasons for disagreement um, and finding common ground uh, across compatible views. Um, we're trying to capture changing perspectives over time with uh, iterated reports. Uh, that also involves showing the evolution of how opinion trends change over time. Uh, and then we're also experimenting with using LLMs to find consensus between different groups without people talking to each other, but that's more experimental. And so with all that, we're hoping that we can help these two middle parts of deliberative processes scale a little bit better than they have before by making these possible for people to participate in asynchronously. Uh, they don't have to be in the same place at the same time. They don't even have to talk directly to each other, but they get a little bit of that human element by seeing specifically what other people are saying. Um, and people can direct their own experience of the uh, the general reports we create, finding topics that are of particular interest to them, topics they don't understand as well, um, and learning from the rest of uh, the citizens that they're in collectives with.